Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to cover a bunch of advanced box fighting tricks that I honestly wish I knew earlier. These techniques will range from a new edit peak, to an updated phasing method, to even a 200 IQ counter of the Mongrel Classic. For each, I'll show what the trick is, how to do it, why it works, and then an in-game example. So without further ado, let's start with one of the simplest yet most effective techniques to win box fights. Pre-firing. If you've ever watched Mitro before, then you've most likely noticed how insane he is at predicting edits. Literally anytime someone goes for an edit play on him, he already sees it coming and has taken a shot. The action he's doing there is called pre-firing. As the name implies, he's firing his shotgun before or just as his opponent comes out from behind cover. This leaves whoever he's facing with absolutely no time to react and block the shot since it was fired so early. Now, evidently, this is an insanely useful and powerful technique if you can master it. It's everyone's dream to be able to do damage without receiving any in return. But obviously, it's not that easy. The difficult part is actually knowing when to pre-fire. Luckily for you guys though, I have some tips and pointers to help you out. The first is to always look for your opponent to have their blueprints out. Anytime someone in game makes an edit, they're forced to hold out their blueprint and pencil. This is extremely helpful for knowing when to time your pre-fire as it signals to you that they're making the edit. Next tip is to utilize your opponent's positioning to your advantage. What I mean is that if you know you're up against a good player, you should be confident that they won't make a bad edit like this. Instead, they'll wait to get positioned for a right hand peek and then make the edit. So as Mongrel shows here, you can time your pre-fire with when they get into the right position, not any time before or after. Lastly, do not try and react to the edit being made. Nobody in the entire world is fast enough to do that, which is why pre-firing is mainly based on predicting. The one and only time it's possible to react is when your opponent makes a double edit. This is because you can time your pre-fire after the animation goes off on the initial structure. Moving on, and the second trick is an insane new edit that will take any opponent off guard. I'm sure you've been in this situation before where you have a ramp over your opponent and you're deciding what edit to make. The problem with a normal half ramp edit is that most of the time, your opponent will be waiting for you to make it. So a much better option my cousin showed me is to do this. Start editing editing the back of the ramp on whichever side you're closer to and go around in a U. Do not confirm it yet, but when you do, it should look like a big spiral staircase. Back to the move and as you're holding the edit, run about halfway up onto the ramp, then confirm it. This will put you up onto the middle of the staircase in which you can keep your forward momentum and get a clean pump shot off on your unsuspecting opponent. From their perspective, they'll be waiting for you to drop in front of them when and out of nowhere, you pop out next to them. In my opinion, the only difficult part about this is making sure you're high enough up on the ramp when you make the edit. If you're not, you won't go on top of it and you'll mess the whole thing up. Lastly, be aware that you can do this from both sides regardless of where your opponent is. So now, whenever your opponent is trapped under your ramp, hit them with the Kazaki Classic for an easy kill. Third trick is a weird phasing mechanic that only works works with pre-edited cones. Don't ask me why or how it works, all I know is that you can pre-edit three sides of a cone into this weird structure and then put it into people's one by ones. This is insanely useful in box fights as not only will your opponent be distracted by the build on top of them, but they also won't be able to build and protect themselves since there's a cone in their box. Unfortunately though, there is one catch, for some odd reason, you cannot place the edited cone when there's already an edited cone on top of your opponent's floor. It has to be a bare floor on top of the one by one, no cone or edited cone. A smart workaround I devised is to edit the cone you replace the same exact way as the pre-edited cone. This way it breaks off and you can sneak in the edited one before your opponent can turbo build anything of their own. I believe Cypher showed this trick recently, but I saw it much earlier from a player named C. McHugh. 
He showed me that not only can you slip the cone in by just breaking your opponent's one normally, but that you can also trap people in from the top and then reset the cone to get a shot off. Technique number 4 is a sick way to counter the Mongrel Classic that I saw from 72 hours. I've shown the Mongrel Classic like 500 times already, but all I'm referring to is when you immediately place a ramp after taking someone's wall. The most common counter after you get ramped over is to edit out the bottom or the side, but sometimes it just is not quick enough against a good opponent. What you can do instead is as they go to edit the ramp they placed over you, edit out the two front tiles of the floor you're on. This will cause your opponent to fall out of the box and give you enough time to reset the fight. It's seriously that simple and easy to pull off when your opponent tries to walk forward. Just keep in mind, this will not work if your opponent is on the ground floor. The next trick is another cheeky and weirdly similar edit that Ninja got outplayed with. What his opponent did there was edit the two front tiles of the floor just like the last move and then made a bottom corner edit on his wall. This in turn caused the ramp Ninja was on to break since it was only attached by the two build pieces his opponent edited out. The other thing that wall edit does is that it makes the person inside the box impossible to hit it because they're still protected by the upper side of the wall. So on top of there being no counterplay or way to stop the ramp from breaking, your opponent also won't have an angle on you to get a shot off. Remember though, this is very situational. For this to work, you need to be in a 1x1 one one connected only by a single floor. Realistically speaking, this is not too odd or unique of a situation as evidenced by the fact Ninja found himself in it, but it's still something to think about when you're box fighting. Second to last trick is actually a 2 for 1 with a couple of beautiful juke outplays from FaZe Martos. As we just saw there, Martos was trying trapped inside a box as his opponent tried to steal his floor. That situation is easily one of the worst positions to be in, simply because there's not many ways to get back the upper hand. The move Martos showed is to edit out the side, build a ramp as if you're going up that direction, then turn around and edit the floor for a pump shot. If you can do this quickly, trust me when I say even really good players will fall for it. The other juke, which is similar, is if you're opponent is under the ramp in front of you, make a fake edit out the one side, then edit the stairs back for a free shot. I actually like this one a bit more because I know I would fall for it in game and get dumped on. Plus, it's again from the king of tips and tricks that inspired me to make my videos, FaZe Martos. The final trick is what's called the peanut butter edit peak. This is what I usually call the god edit and it's not a new trick by any means. However, after watching my man Zexro play box fight wagers, it's evident not everyone knows how to do it correctly. First off, you want to make sure you're positioned as far to the left as you can. Do not just stand there in the middle of the wall and make yourself an easy target. Next, complete the edit from bottom right to to top left, not top left to bottom right. Reason being is it's much harder to hit flicks to your left than it is to hit flicks to your right. Lastly, make sure you're close up to the wall and combine everything I've said to give yourself the best possible peek. You want your opponent to have no time to react or even see you before you reset the wall. And a great example of this would be Clicks, who has easily one of the best peanut butter peeks in the world. Overall guys, those are 7 or I guess 8 box fighting techniques I wish I knew earlier. So if you learned something new or found the video useful, then do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jerrion. We're about to reach 500k subscribers on the channel, so let me know something special I should do for it. Maybe a giveaway or a video of some sort, I don't really know which is why I'm asking you all to help me out. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later!